Hey everyone, welcome to another video review. This is the Fans Toys FT61 Inquisitor, their version of Generation 1 Scourge. You can see him there in front of the box. We'll go ahead and put him off to the side real quick and look at said box and yep, big old box. And he yeah, has, of course, designed to emulate the whole, uh, somewhat emulate the uh, official Masterpiece figures. Yeah, made in China there, you got Fans Toys 2024 FT61. Bit of nice artwork there of him kind of leaping like a vampire and Inquisitor up top of there because nobody expects that. Uh, and Taurus on the top here you have shot of his alt mode to the little barcode if you want to scan that go ahead on the side here you have fan toys inquisitor and on this side you have the same thing on the bottom you have the same thing as the top and on the back you have some uh, product shots what's included some copyrights and ages 15 plus and uh and uh well big old bio very long bio too weirdly enough Fan toys apparently does a lot of long bios so if you want to read that there you go and the inside also a styrofoam tray. Huh. Also included the box is this, uh, well, the instruction manual, which yeah tells you how to, how to, how to you know, transform and all that stuff and what's included again and yeah, all that jazz. Uh, as a as instructions, it's uh, eh, not great. Uh, that does gloss over a lot of important things. Actually, I would say very important things. It just kind of glosses right over them. And you'll, and you'll figure it out, right? Yeah, after you've transformed it three times, you go, hey, wait a minute, what's this? <laughs> yeah, so those instructions are not particularly good. It's kind of largely, they it seem they really want you to actually just use the video ones. They, I think that's what the QR code goes to, but yeah. I uh, also get this um, collector card, which, you know, nice bit of plastic there. The CG render of Inquisitor. On the back, you have the very, very tiny typeface, which is like, wow, this is ridiculous. And also the tech specs, and again, more shots of the figure, and there you go. Inquisitor. Yes, their version of Scourge. And yeah, he is, well, this is, we're starting from the alt mode, because yeah, even though he's packaged in robot mode, well, the transformations video, separate transformation videos. So if you're here for the transformation, this is the wrong video. This is the review. The transformation video will be separate. And we'll cover from robot mode and all that stuff. So this is what I'm doing. So deal with it. Um, <laughs> this is this infamous space boat mode, which, yeah, it's his classic wedge shaped bulb alt mode. Looks pretty good. Nice, uh, nice, nice, very metallic blues all over. Both his very pale kind of, well, almost maybe not, not necessarily metallic per se, but I don't know. It's kind of. Very vaguely bluish grayish color for the most part. You got this blue, nice rich blue here. You got a different shade of blue there. You got the little red dots there on his little thrusters. Thrusters also metallic blue. You got blue all over the place. You know, it actually cleans up pretty nicely into the alt mode. You can see that, you know. But, you know, the bottom side, yeah, you can see just a folded up robot on the bottom. There is some detailing here, like these little bits of red here, and all that stuff. But, you know, it is pretty much just a folded up robot on the bottom. They don't even try to hide that really. Particularly, nobody really does. Nobody tries to hide the bottom the bottom side with the robot bits, and that was came a little undone. Nobody really tries to hide it. And that came undone too. It actually cleans up pretty well, all things considered. Uh, I do like, at least, I like it as far as much as I can like a Scourge uh, alt mode, which is, it does look like the space boat. It doesn't look, it's not too egregious. No weird, not a lot of weird bits sticking out. And it looks like, I guess it could fly through space, sort of, maybe. It's a vaguely futuristic space vehicle thing. So, there you go, really. It's, it's pretty good. A couple things to note, I guess. Only really a couple accessories to know here. One, it comes with an adapter for their universal display spin, which nobody likes and I don't have. And I thought about buying it for this review. Then I saw it and I went, yeah, no. And I saw just how badly received it is in general. But, you know, this if you do have that for whatever reason, you can get, get one of the, or intend to buy it. You can use this. Um, what this does is, uh, yeah, for this, what you do is you, it clips on. You see there's a little clip here that goes over the top front here. And then this goes over and these, these peg holes will go into these... Uh, poles right there so you know like this and just make sure that and it's supposed to well something's going weird because that didn't quite go right there we go oh no okay on my night now i don't know what that's that's about because i could have sworn i had it transformed properly so uh, there we go 
got it on mostly yeah so it clips on over that and that's your uh that goes in the stand and you use that for the stand and i don't have it so i can't show it to you but i because i have no intention of getting it but is that uh, also hey look there's a gun which you know it comes with this is regular gun nice it's actually nicely detailed you know same stage of blues and everything plus a little red sight and that handle folds up and then this the the magazine goes in this hole right here and yeah i mean it's not great to be honest but hey with the flight stand now it actually balances <laughs> so there's that um he also comes with is a target master yay it's target master which i don't know if they actually gave him a name was a fracas in the cartoon or was it a different one i just forgot of course it did right as i'm filming i forget the name i look it up and everything i forget what, I, what i'm filming ah coral Huh. They call him Quarrel. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting that. Well, yeah, I was right. It was Fracas. I, I did. I was right. Okay. Fracas. But yeah, Quarrel here. Um, it's a, I'm just going to show it off right now. It's a decent, it's actually pretty cool looking little robot. Um, nothing, I don't know. Nothing particularly amazing, but you know, it's kind of two tone colors. The, the head is picked out nicely. The nice red face, the yellow eyes there. It looks actually pretty good. A nice uh, finish and everything. Yeah, it's a pretty good little target uh, target master guy. Um, in general, and you can see he's yay tall. Um, I actually have him just real quick. Just uh, here's the one that came with um, Quietus. And yeah, things are they I guess changed the line design philosophies or something at some point because yeah, a uh, bit of a disparity there. That's the one that came with their Quietus. I don't remember his name. I'm not gonna look it up right now, but yeah. There's that. So, uh, there you go on that front. Yeah, the posability. Um, posability in this guy, you see heads can go left and right and go up and down a bit. It's good as a ball joint. you got waggle. There's a bit of posability. This is also really loose, though. It's really loose on mine. It's kind of disappointing. I may have to figure out, it might, might be tighten that screw or might be just get some floor polish in there or something like that. Shoulders can do full, full 360. They go outward right there like that. You know, bang his own head in. You also do that because of the transformation. Um, there is no bicep swivel. There is a hinged elbow, which goes that far. Uh, the wrists, as far as I can tell, they cannot move. I, I saw someone actually try to move it, and oh boy, did not work on for them. There is a uh, waist swivel, which is nice. Uh, this will have to get out of the way, which it does. There is a hinge there, just so you can get this out of the way. So there's a nice little hinge, uh, waist swivel there. You got hips, which go forward only that far. Uh, back, they go that far back. Outward, they, own, they go this far. Uh, there is a... Th there is a thigh swivel right there. Uh, knees, you get actually pretty good bend, knees. And feet, you do have a bit of tilt. You can see that. It's a bit of tilt there. Um, I don't think there's any sort of other... No, there's no other uh, hinges or anything down there. It's just a tilt. And again, this can go up and down, but that's not really useful for anything except to get out of the way for the waist. But yeah. So that's uh, that, but uh, transformation real quick, and I'm just gonna do this here because it's so simple. Yeah, it's so simple, there's no real reason to uh, leave it for the transformation video. But then again, I might do put in there anyway. But yeah, uh, just real quick, yeah, just uh, hinge that up and bring that down and then hinge, and then that's this uh, this tab will go in there, right there. Bring that up and that hinge, bring it down right there, and tab it in the side, like so. Now, the this bit right here, there's... Um, a little hinge right here, which you can kind of use as an ab crunch, sort of, but it kind of will it'll just wind up looking. Oh, there is an ab crunch right there. Forgot about that. <laughs> Trying to move it and didn't move. Now it's moving. Figures. Yeah. Forgot. Yeah, there's an ab crunch there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's that. But you can also use this, I guess, as further ab crunch, although it's kind of look weird because they're breaking the sculpt. But you can use that to bring the legs around. And also, right here on the shins, there's a little tab you flip out. That's one thing the instructions do not, I believe, do not uh, mention. Okay, bring that up and around and use this hinge to bring it around and these uh, tabs will go into little slots right there on the shoulder line. And they'll just kind of slot right over like that. And so just kind of slot in. Make sure to give it a good push like down like this so it, you know, kind of locks into place. Like so this will come down and this right here, this little, hint, this little hinge thing will hinge in and kind of hold the barrel in place like that. And down here at the feet, inside the feet, there's a, these little things, which you bring these out and you rotate them around like that. 
you know, bring it out and then rotate it around like so then bring it down and that's the gun mode and the reason i'm showing it off here is uh this kind of kind of store you see the tabs right here and yeah i'll, I'll get to the handle in a second tabs right here can slot in right here on the stand and yeah only on the stand you can only store away if it's on the flight stand which is funny because from what i'm seeing um that's where the flight stand attaches so uh problem <laughs> right immediately because like that's can't uh store you'd have to like put it in like this for it to work to store it also mine yeah you can see it just kind of flops it's, it doesn't store super well it just easily flops down well that's partially because of an oversight they had so these are not this is not the original this is not the original handle pieces right here these these are not these are and yeah, that was a problem, which yeah, um, if you got one of the first releases, basically you bought from a US retailer when it first came out and not from the China-based retailer like I did, well, congratulations, you spent $50 too much. And also, um, <laughs> you uh, got a hand, you got, you did not get these unless you, well, went back to your retailer and asked for them later, because these came with the second shipment, AKA the people who, uh, you know, bought it from a China-based retailer. You can see, the tabs are actually midway up the handle. You can compare it to this, where the, the tab, this, this tab is on the bottom of the handle. Here it's midway up. Yeah. But yeah, so you have to swap them if you wanna, yeah, the, 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 the yeah, so if you were like me, got it from a China-based retailer like Z, you got this with the new handles, which is fine and the great dandy. I said a lot of people reported these handles, well, kind of breaking, things breaking trying either the handle breaks or the little peg it goes on breaks so um pulling these off for me the, the original handles not difficult just putting even pressure on it and just kind of popped right off no problem i had no problem with that i'm um, putting the new handles on i was having difficulty with until I, uh, I heated up the new handles with the uh with a hair dryer and then they eventually just popped right on make sure of course you know doing it in the right uh, orientation and everything see so but um, yeah, multiple people reported pegs and handles, that pegs and handles there snapping, because yeah, the little mushroom peg here, which it goes over, and multiple people snapped that off. People have snapped the peg, uh, this handles, um, trying to replace them. So they've even in issued a little warning of, um, if you're not gonna use the target master, don't bother. Because the problem is these hand, the, the little tabs and the handles for the robot mode are not correctly aligned. So you can't actually hold it with the original handles. But the thing is these original handles actually work better with the, uh, alt mode storage yeah as it stands because you know you, you have it upside down and this would hook in such a way that it was a little closer to the gun and the gun itself would kind of brace it but now because they the peg the tabs are so low on the handle well the, that gun just wants to droop so uh doesn't matter anyway because you have to use the flight stand bit and on top of that you can't point it forward because the flight stand will be in the way so it's just oh just the target master just when it comes to actually interacting with the robot, you know, it's chief purpose. Um, it can't not properly, not out of the box. And, um, it just, they just did a bad job of engineering it <laughs> and they, and their replacement, it, it works for the robot mode, but it doesn't work for the alt mode or at least works even worse for the alt mode than the originals, the original did. So, there you go. Yeah, so that's my thing of, about this handle. Again, just um, make sure to heat up the plastic a bit before you try to force them on. And also, when you do push them on, um, right here, you see the where the peg is. Yeah, you see where the peg is? That's where you want to put your pressure is right there. I kind of, what I did was I just kind of braced it on this side and then just squeezed it on. Like, kind of squeezed my fingers together like that, pushing it on after I heated this up. And it worked great. So, yeah, if you, if you try to push the pressure out here, it's going to be a lot more trouble. So, just kind of... Yeah, I would say just very much just brace it here and just squeeze the new handle on until it pops, clicks in. And again, use, use you know, heat it up so it's more, a little more malleable, and there you go. So there you go. The Target Master, um, it feels like they just kind of plain screwed up. It's that simple. It just feels like they just plain screwed up. So, uh, I mean, it, it's the Target Master. I mean, warts and all, but, you know, including just, hey, look, that looks look like a folded up robot. But... It feels like they just kind of misengineered it in a weird way, particularly with the hand, how he holds it, and just they just plain screwed up. So there you go on that. Um, 
we'll see him again in the robot mode. But uh, some quick comparisons after I get this stuff out off. Um, I'm never going to use this flight stand, so pfft, on that. But yeah, uh, some quick comparisons here in the alt mode to a couple things. Uh, for the sake of it, here is an MP Seeker. This one's the Ma uh, Make Toys version, but, you know, they all pretty much are the same size. Just to give you an idea there. Pretty much every single MP Seeker I have is pretty much winds up roughly the same size, so this will do. It's the easiest transform. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a bit, you know, MP Seeker is a bit bigger overall in a sense, but, like, yeah, he's definitely a thick chunk of plastic and metal. Here, of course, is... Uh, Quiet, uh, Fans Toys Quietus. Their version of Cyclonus, because that's the version I have, because I think it looks better than the X-Transmos version. So, uh, there you go. Quietus has got a really good alt mode, personally, I find. I just, I like, yeah, I may not be technically accurate to the cartoon, but man, does it look good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the, uh, alt mode comparisons I'm gonna do. There's really not much else, really. He's a space boat there, um, so there's that. There's the other, of course, the uh, other alt mode, which isn't really too much, so I'll get to that, to that real quick. I'll, again, transformations in the transformation video, but yeah, I'll just get to that real quick. Yeah, so uh, that's more or less it, kind of. I mean, I didn't fully do it, but let's fix that real quick. There we go. But yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it, it, it's it is you know, it's just as goofy as it was in the show. It's just it's the hey, look, the head sticks out, and then you kind of got this weird mess right here. No one's really, I don't think anyone's really done a particularly good job with this mode, but then again, most people don't really care about this mode because of how goofy it looks. I don't even remember if actually, I'm off the top of my head, I'm just kind of thinking it actually might not be there, but I think that looks a little better at least just clean things up a little bit and kind of fill things in a little bit, but you know. There you go. Um, it's just as goofy as you might remember it, which is, it's pretty goofy looking, to be honest. Um, also, the, the mind, the little tip of the thruster started coming off recently. I don't know what that was about. It looks like the glue might have, uh, might just glue that in place, because as far as I can tell, that it's not supposed to come off, but yeah. Um, there you go. Yay. In fact, I'm not even sure if I need to cover that in the transformation video, but I'll probably do it anyway just for the. Take so a completionist uh, completion, but uh, yeah, yay! Imagine, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I'll go ahead and get this guy to transform into robot mode, and we'll keep going, going with this review, shall we?
Yeah, Inquisitor's robot mode. Yeah, he is very, very, very Scourge-like. You can see that. Yeah, um, not surprising he looks like Scourge. I mean, that's what they're setting out to do. Uh, yeah, you can see there. Yeah, getting a little bit closer. Uh, yeah, his uh, very kind of mustached and bearded face right there with the red eyes, very sharp angles on the face. You got his little miniature thruster pod there on the top of his head and all that stuff. You got pretty much just, well, blue. All the way down, this various shades of blue. All the way, got my little scratches in the nah, various shades of blue, light blue, dark blue, uh, grayish blue, all that stuff. All the way down, he got his little, of course, his little pink fingernails and everything. All the way down, he's got little pointy red toes. All that, he's got a big, huge wingspan. All that stuff. He's got a bad backpack, bit of a backpack, but it's kind of expected for a, a G1 scourge, and it compacts all right, I guess. Um, nothing amazing, but nothing particularly egregious either it's it's complicated uh the backpack is a little annoying sometimes but like it's kind of what you'd expect from a scourge but like at the same time it's like <laughs> skirt man scourge ready gotta be like this so yeah um kind of that very vampiric kind of it looks like a cape thing but yeah you get this this the backpack which it does somewhat clean up you can see there is definitely junk in there but like it cleans up pretty decently so when you look at them back it still looks kind of nice and smoothish for the, smoothish for the most part so there's that um the only thing is trying to position these wings in such a way that it doesn't run afoul of this whole backpack is a little annoying and frustrating because, like, it doesn't always work super well. But, you know, that's just kind of how it is. Um, a couple accessories, of course. Yeah, again, the uh, this gun can unfold that. And, hey, look, there's a tab in the handle. And, hey, is, he opened up his hand. And, hey, look, there's a, uh, a slot there. And you can plug that in. And, hey, look. It uh, holds it actually pretty securely. It's um, The tab is on mine is, mine is nice and tight. So he does hold it pretty well, you know, no, no, no risk of that dropping. Of course, same with the uh, target master, I already showed the robot mode. Tell, yeah, it's not going to be, comparatively, it's not going to be particularly tall. Um, but, you know, same deal with the whole, uh, whoop. yeah, this, that's the thing is, um, showing those tabs off one of them. So. Yeah, so here's the thing, um, the problem was with the original um, this is the original handle. Um, the problem was the tab here, because of how you see where the, uh, this bit is where it will hold onto the peg. It has to be above the, above the hand. And the problem is the tab didn't go all the way down. Hey, the funny enough, the only way you could hold it was, you know, if it was upside down, if the gun was upside down, you could actually hold it upside down. But yeah, as it stands, you can see that th there's no clearance for the original thing on top of that. The tab is not very tight either. So this, that's why the tabs had to be lower, so you can actually hold the stupid thing. Fortunately, it's not, unfortunately, yeah, it's not super, still not very particularly secure. The tabs aren't. So yeah, he doesn't hold his target master particularly well, unfortunately. So it, it kind of works all right, I guess, but like not particularly, it's not particularly good. And on top of that, yeah, his thumb just, not a lot of room for his thumb either, so... Yeah, um, he can't hold it particularly well. On top of his uh, shoulder joints, a little, yeah, it doesn't really hold that up particularly well. So it does work. So yeah, if you're someone who really likes your target masters, it you, once you fix it, it works. But it's not particularly great. And uh, eh, I don't know. I'll probably just leave the target master off the side or something. But yeah, it does work. I'll just get this out of his hand just so it's on the way. Yeah. Um, it does work ish. It's just not super great. Now, um, a couple of, one other thing of accessories is, um, by the way, the fly stand is not compatible with this thing at all. And then the, once it's in robot mode, this is not compatible with it. I'm not sure if it's there, there's something about their, their particular flight stand that works just fine with all the robots, but as it stands, it's not, yeah, that stays com, that, uh, compatibility piece is just doesn't do anything for the robot, but he does come with several faces in a baggie. Stupid baggy open. <laughs> yep, several faces, and um, they are. So you got his default there, which is kind of just a, just, you know, kind of somewhat neutral, slight frown, you know, as bad guys tend to be like. But he also has, let's see, kind of a angry yelling face. He has kind of a evil smile. Kind of a slightly concerned, kind of glaring face there, and uh, kind of squinting a bit more. 
And all of these are pretty straightforward to uh, swap. What you do here is there's a little hinge right here on the head. You just, well, you take this hinge on the head here. You just pop it up like that. And you take one of the other faces and you just unpeg it from the top, like bam. And pop that in and close it back up. And there you go. Now he's got a new face. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. It's actually really easy. No screws or anything required. And that's nice. Um, oh yeah, well, I'm, I'm thinking about, I just thought about, yeah. You see, but yeah, it's unfortunate you can see a couple scratches. I believe that is just a side effect of trying to transform it. Um, there is definitely things on the transformation, which I'm like, yeah. Um, it is a little bit, um, yeah, I should have talked about it earlier, but yeah, the transformation is kind of, eh. It's just kind of, the problem, problem is just simply a lot of stuff is just hanging loose, like the backpack. It's just, hanging loose the the head the head armature will eventually be just hanging loose you know there's a lot of stuff just hanging loose there uh these bits are kind of frustrating um these uh, the little shins are a bit frustrating to deal with i've uh, scratched some people including myself have scratched these up i'm not sure how you can see that but there's a bit of a gouge right there on this one there's a bit of a gouge there it's not as bad i've seen far worse but yeah some people have scr definitely scratches up so that's a bit of a problem but Another big thing uh, people complain about is uh, balance. Uh, people have complained that he is very back heavy and tends to fall over. Yeah, it takes a lot, but as you can see, I planked him down. He actually stands pretty well. I have to use some serious, yeah, I have to use some serious um, force to get it to fall over. Because, yeah, well, he's got a bit of a backpack, as you can see. There's weight there. And his heels are uh, not really there. So one thing people have done, and it does actually work, which is these bits right here for the alt node. They're supposed to be flipped out for alt node, but people have flipped these out as heel supports. And it, believe it or not, it does actually work pretty well. Um, if you need it, if you find that he is trying to fall over a lot, um, just flip those out. He is a little more stable with those out. Um, you don't need them possibly if you get if you do if you do everything right um for the robot mode which good chance that the robot mode will not be totally transformed correctly out of the box i have noticed that that the robot mode i when i out of the fresh out of the box i had to do some uh fixing to say the least i do some fixing out of the box but uh yeah if if he if he you're having trouble standing getting him to stand in the robot mode uh just flip those bits out and he might actually stand just fine after that See, he's a little more stable now, but I find that he's tend to be stable as he's intended to be uh, transformed anyway. At least on mine, this the, he's stable without these. Most mostly stable without these anyway. For me, uh, I have to do a lot of work to get him to fall backwards. But your mileage may vary. Um, but if you're having trouble, those heels, those kind of in, improvised heels, will work. So there you go on all that. Um, that was my big complaints. It's just the transformation can be a little frustrating it's because mostly because stuff's hanging all over the place. And um, he might be prone to falling over in some cases. Also, I scratched mine up a little bit because it's, it's the kind of the typical fans toys thing, which I've discovered, which is if you transform, you're probably going to scratch the crap out of it at some point because they don't think about that. Apparently they, they make these toys apparently for people. Mostly just they open up the box, they pose a few times and they place it on the shelf and never touch it again. Not the way I'd enjoy my toys personally, but hey, you know, you do you. But um, yeah, so anyway, let's go ahead and talk about posability. So head, um, it's on a dual, one of those dual hinge things. You got left and right swivel. Um, it's a little limited by the collar, unfortunately. And you can also look up and down on a separate uh, hinge. Got a lot of upward and a little bit of downward. But yeah, again, it's a little limited just because of just shapes. Uh, the the ba backpack here, these are on, you know, these can go folded forward and back. There's a hinge here. There's also an upward uh, rotation here. But the problem is the backpack itself just kind of gets its own way here. Because that can f um, go upward. The problem is once you do that, you can see uh, the backpack is now um, at a bit of an angle. Because it's now the tabs are resting against this blue piece right here. So, yeah, when you have it like this, it's a little nicer. It can sit a little nicer. But once you have, if you want to put this up, you're going to have the, you know, kind of force it up past this thing and then there's a good chance this will unseat itself and yeah um, but you can have it up at an angle but it's just and it looks cool at the up at an angle you can see it's a bit of a difference there but unfortunately yeah it just it causes a little bits of um little i'm worried over time about stress or something on the plastic but 
This thing also he is definitely ha die cast for sure, mostly down here in the legs, but he definitely has die cast. I believe this is die cast too. So there's might be die cast up here too. But anyway, um more posability shoulders can do technically full 360. If it wasn't for the backpack, they would be able to do a full 360, but they can't because of it. Uh, you do have outward. There's a bit of a ratchet there. There's a bicep swivel right there. Nice and clean friction. Uh, elbows go a far. Good, good amount of bend right there. The hand can uh, uh, swivel. There's also inward and outward right there. You can see there's a, because I believe it is on a ball joint. So you have the wiggle waggle right there. Uh, now, uh, hand, the fingers are also pretty posable. Um, looking right there, you can see each finger. The thumb is on a ball joint, plus there's a hinge right above that. You can see that. So there's all that right there. And each finger itself, there's a hinge at the base knuckle, and there's another hinge right here, mid knuckle, and this, the fi index finger has a third hinge. But they all can, uh, rot you know, hinge separately. But yeah, you can see those all can, hint, you know, bend that much, and then the index finger can bend a little bit more. See, like that. So there you go, you know, pretty decent hands. Not the most, not the most amazing. There's no splay whatsoever, for example, but still pretty good overall. The uh, There is a waist swivel that is very much ratcheted and, and unhindered by the backpack, so don't worry about that. There is an ab crunch, which, you know, pretty good amount of ab crunch. That might also help you with the whole, you know, backpack thing. <laughs> unfortunately, you know, this, this right here, there's not much holding the backpack in place, and this clip right here, unfortunately, can uh, sometimes come a little undone. So uh, be careful about that. Uh, it's really easy to tab it back in, but still might be a little bit of an annoyance just because it doesn't want to stay tabbed in. Uh, the hips here, though, there's a, there are hip skirts right here. There's a slight hip skirt right there, but it doesn't really move that much, to be honest. But there's a bit of a hip skirt. But yeah, you got forward that much. Uh, back about that much. Not really a whole lot there. Outward, you do have... About that much, unfortunately, before it starts banging to uh, itself. If you go forward a little bit, you can get more outward. In fact, yeah, if you just yeah, you can get a little more outward if you uh, move forward a bit as well. But yeah, there's really not a whole lot there. There's a thigh swivel. You get about that much range. Knees. There's a double jointed knee. So you get nice curl. Um, some people complain out of box that the knees are on um, theirs are loose and unfloppy. Mine really aren't. They are nice and tight. But um, if there is a problem, there is, I believe, a screw under this panel right here you can adjust. Um, I'm sure, as for this one, I think you can, I'm not sure, but you might be able to pop this thing out. I think that might be a screw hole cover. I'm not 100% certain it has to be because, yeah, this is a solid piece. This one is definitely not. So I believe this is a screw hole cover. So if you can get this off, I believe you can tighten this if this is the problem. This is the problem knee joint. I believe this under one of these, yeah under this panel there's a screw there so i'm not sure if you can get this panel out of the way which can be a bit of an issue but if you can find a way in there we'll check on this side yeah the other problem is yeah getting this panel all the way you're gonna have to basically just assemble a large chunk of this knee so you can get this panel all the way and yeah it's not gonna be fun time so you have loose knees um good luck with that <laughs> because you can the screws are there to tighten but unfortunately um they are also very well hidden so uh, there you go on that. Um, and his feet, well, he does have tilt, quite a bit of tilt right there. And he also has a uh, forward and back on the hinge right there, mostly back, but a little bit tiny forward. And right here, there is a toe joint that goes down right there. Right there, it goes down a bit, quite a bit, thanks to transformation. And this toe joint can also go down. So you don't have upward, but you know, you do have a lower, low, low, uh, low, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Down, mover, moving toe joint. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> so there you go for that particulate articulation is pretty darn good. Now, um, some quick comparisons. Um, let's get them back here just so we have a little bit of room. Uh, I already I did a seeker comparison earlier. So here is the official MP Starscream version two. Just to give you an idea there, he is quite a bit taller. Rodimus Prime, unfortunately, is in storage. I don't want to get him out. So uh, here's a MP Hot Rod, just to give you an idea, idea there. This is the MP28 Hot Rod. 
Good idea there. Here's a uh, X Trans Bots Ultra Magnus Citizen Stack. There you go on that front. Quite a bit taller. <laughs> Here's MP36 Megatron, just, you know, because he's kind of the standard for Masterpiece Decepticons. And here they are because, well, the trio. Trio of Season 3 Decepticons. Here's uh, Fans Toys. Um, Polyon? Yeah, I think so. It was it was, no, it's not Polyon. Sovereign, that's what it was. I got the wrong... <laughs> Third party name. And of course, uh, Fans Toys Quietus. And I think that makes for a very good looking trio. Very nice. I like the, you know, kind of the purple, the bluish purple, and the very blue. It just looks really nice together. This is the original release. This is not the metallic release, or, so just an FYI on that one. But yeah, um, there they are together. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> Personally, I think I know a lot of people are kind of poo-pooing on uh, Galva the Sovereign now. I don't know why he's still perfectly good. But, eh, whatever. He's kind of heavy, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, just real quick as well. Just here's the, um, what is it? Nightstick or whatever the heck uh, fans always called him with um, Fracas Coral. Yeah. Just give an idea there. Not bad. There is uh, Inquisitor as a whole. Should you get him? Well, a couple things. Number one, as you saw, um, probably saw, yeah, uh, a couple little issues. I, can't, I keep forgetting. Oh, yeah, there's another issue, which is a couple little issues, namely um, some people have trouble getting him to stand properly. Um, I don't have that, but I like I have them falling backwards a lot. The transformation is a little frustrating. It's like, it's kind of actually not too difficult to understand. The biggest thing is just simply a lot of stuff just flopping around while you're transforming it, which can be really frustrating to deal with. Also, it's on top of that, there's pieces that are a little easy to scratch. i um, noticed particularly with the thigh, the, the little, um, not thigh, but uh, shins, shin pieces and whatnot when you're transforming those. can for, for me, sometimes they get really stuck on there and also... Um, Things can get scratched really easily as well. Uh, Target Master is very, feels very like they just kind of screwed up and just get and whatever to ship it out, you know? Uh, so yeah, if you're someone who really likes the Target Master aspect, uh, sorry, but he's gonna, he's just not particularly good. The Target Master looks all right, all right, but he doesn't work very well with um, Inquisitor, which isn't good, you know, because that's his primary purpose. The robot lo mode looks fantastic. The only thing is, yeah, the backpack kind of gets in its own way a little bit, particularly in trying to pose the wings, but he does pose pretty well. Um, he's got, yeah, he's got a pretty good posability. He looks great. He's got a good finish. Um, he doesn't have a lot of accessories, but I'm kind of cool with that. You know, he, and of course, unfortunately, he's only really compatible with the fans toys flight stand and no other flight stand because they decided, you know, to be like that <laughs> for no good reason. So there you go. So, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. The, again, the the part that comes with the, the 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 target master also is incorrect, and um, you might break it if you try to uh, swap it over. So that's always fun. But yeah, he and of course, yeah. The the, the 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 alternate mode is what it is, which is it's Scourge's alt mode, you know, warts and all, which is you know, it's a weird space boat thing. And of course, a lot of people are going to want to buy three of these things or more because you got to have sweeps. But he does look good. Um, I do like it overall as much as I can like a G1 Scourge, which is a weird figure in general, just because of all his weird quirks of the design they made for that character. So, yeah, he, he's overall, I think, really good. He's a good, um, solid figure, just with a kind of frustrating transformation. And there you go. If you bought him from, like, Show Z or whatever, for, like, ID, he's about $195. You buy him from, like, a uh, domestic U.S. retailer, he's closer to $240. And I think that's way too much. $200 is also a little spendy, but it's fan toys, and you're really not going to get much else. The only other option is x bots, which, having seen that, is all right. But, eh, I don't know. x bots always feels like more of a gamble when it comes to will it work or not. <laughs> but... 
some people will like it how it looks better, but you know, it's a, and there was, so uh, there you go. Also, if you're someone who wants to get multiples, hey, why not have one be scourge and the rest be sweeps? So hey, but yeah, I think it's maybe a little spendy, but that's just kind of par for the course with fan toys. You're just going to be spending a little more than feel what feels comfortable because it's fans toys, and you gotta you got you know it's a premium you know product and not just a regular toy or whatever, but whatever. I like it well enough. I don't regret buying it, but yeah. And I now I guess completed my uh, season three Decepticon trio, but yeah, I'm babbling, but he, I think he's worth it in the end, but he's just got a lot of little flaws. I think he's probably one of the weaker fans toys releases. And it's kind of unfortunate that he's the first one that I've reviewed on the channel. So there you go. Um, I hope you found this review informative and interesting. I hope you like, comment, subscribe, check out my uh, social media. It's down in the, down in the video description and at the end of the video, check out my coffee and my Patreon. I shall see you next time with another video review.